Hi guys, hello and welcome to this week's Jazz Across the Pond, Jazz Interviews Reimagined. A new and a very exciting bringing together of two great nations. It's jazz talking like you've never seen or heard it before. Now, let's just see if my main man, my partner in crime, is waiting. Hey, <laughs> I push the buttons and there he appears. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Well, you certainly know how to push my buttons because I'm ah. always just, I'm always right here. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you doing, Roger? Hey, very, very good. Yeah, all the better for seeing you. Been an oh, interesting well, week. Everything's been happening. It's been great, great, great. And jazz has got me through it. Absolutely. That's the way it should be. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there was a. I opened up my uh, Facebook page last week with my Jazz Across the Page advert, and I used a George Gershwin quotation. And a lot of people come, they went, "What a great quotation!" And there are some fabulous quotations from jazz artists. Anyway, I digress. So it's a very good evening, Ed, and welcome along to Jazz Across the Pond, Jazz Interviews Reimagined, all the way from the United Kingdom, and with myself, the Jazz Cat, Roger Lee. And I'm Kevin Goldsby from the United States, and they call me Mr. G. Yeah, Mr. G with his sharp blue shirt. That's Mr. Right. G, the, the shaken to my stirred. So Mr. G is shaken and the jazz cat is stirred. Mm. Now that, that sounds like something out of a gothic romance novel with Fabio on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. All kidding aside, if you missed last week's Jazz Moods on the Voice FM North Devon, hosted by my partner in crime, the Jazz Cat, and shame on you if you weren't listening, Roger brilliantly launched his show with a track that for all practical purposes could be the theme song of the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die. Yeah. Mr. Matt Forbes, I mean, you just listen to it. He's a Canadian jazz singer, and you go, that's the new theme from the James Bond. <laughs> it's a, it's just <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, this is the second time I've heard you play it. And both times, even though some people may have heard it before, you were telling me how the switchboard still lights up like, is that, is that the new James Bond song? You know, And it really does sound like it. It's amazing. It's, it's almost as if John Barry was in the production, did the whole thing. And yeah, incredible. But I thought, you see, initially, I thought you were going to say, the Shaken Not Stirred. I thought you were going to yeah, talk about the Brian Hughes wonderful album, Shaken Not Stirred, which you got me into. Well, hopefully we'll be able to use that line when we introduce a certain person with a CD by that name. And I'm not going to say Well, we've been in contact with him, and had, we had a two-word reply. He went, absolutely, yes. We went, and now he's gone quiet again. <laughs> you know, Brian, Brian's notorious for uh, being a man of few words and uh, doesn't, doesn't put a lot on his uh, social media pages, but I think we'll get him. We'll see. That, that would be a coup for this show. Like any, all the other artists. Talk about coups for show. Very briefly then. So we were just talking about obviously the new James Bond film, which I'm taking my son. We're going to go and see it on Saturday night. The premiere is oh, cool. this Thursday. So uh, we're going to go out of a, a small beer and a little bit of feast. Hmm. And then we're going to go and see the uh, No Ed, Ed, No Time to Die. The last one from Mr. Craig Daniels. So uh, 15 years in the hot seat. So um, yeah, so uh, looking forward to see a bit of James Bond. Anyway, so and uh, yeah, Chicken and Lustre. So we're talking about all these great artists. Mm -hmm. Of course, last week, Pat Kelly, good interview. Oh, Pat Kelly is a gifted American straight ahead jazz guitarist who shared an amazing story with us. Pat was our 30th interview and you'll find Mr. Kelly's interview on YouTube by searching Jazz Across the Pond and make sure you click on videos to access our full list of exceptional interviews. Yes. And by the way, next week's guest is a good friend of ours, the brilliant American saxophonist, Mr. Randy Scott. Wow. So Roger, obviously we've hit the trifecta with Pat Kelly last week, Tom Braxton today, and Randy Scott next week. Yeah. It cannot get any better. It can't get up. I mean, we keep, every week we pinch ourselves and go, who is it this week? And bear in mind, in the interview world, we're the new kids on the block, you know, uh, but on saying that, uh, I actually watched a few back and some of the most wonderful compliment was Mr. Paul Brown, who turned around and goes, listen, guys, thank you so much. He said, I watch your shows. And we both went, 
Mr. Paul Brown watches our shows. So uh, say no more. Yeah, so Pat Kelly, it is available on YouTube. Make sure you watch it. Great interview. Don't want to spoil the tricks. And some uh, wonderful bit of perspective there. Oh, yes. Exactly. Back from his last hour. Anyway, so we've already mentioned it tonight. We're going all the way to Dallas, Texas for tonight's uh, special guest. And it's Mr. Tom Braxton. And this is one that you've worked on hard and uh, great, uh, to, great for pleasure. our English uh, followers. They're going to be going, wow, I like this guy. What we're going to do, uh, because I'm just looking on the screen now, I don't want to panic you, but he's not there yet. So uh, he'll be there. Don't oh, worry, don't no. panic. I'm sure he'll be there. So we're going to play a track from Mr. Tom Braxton, and it's called uh, Looking Up. Uh, see, I say looking up, and he's disappeared. Looking up. Hey, that is spooky. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're pulling, my, you're pulling my leg. I know you're pulling my leg. It was a great cue for a line. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jazz Across the Pod, Jazz Interviews Reimagined with the wonderful Mr. G and myself, the Jazz Cat. We're going to be joined in round about three and a half, four minutes with the man himself, all the way from Dallas, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Braxton. We're going to play a title track from the album of the same name, a bit of looking up, because I'll tell you something, after this track, we're going to be looking up and going, who is this man? Stay with us. Great tune, great artist, just on the other side of it. We'll be back in a moment.
Well, hello there. This is American smooth jazz saxophonist, composer, and producer Tom Braxton from Dallas, Texas. And you're watching me on Jazz Across the Pond with the Jazz Cat and Mr. G. I hope you enjoy. Well, that was an incredible track from an incredible album. It really is. The album is called Looking Up. And it is a brilliant track. And we're so pleased to man him, now have the man himself sat all the way from Dallas, Texas. What can we say about this week's very, very special guest? Well, he's a treasure. And we use that phrase generally because we like, he is definitely a treasure. An incredible, talented saxophonist, composer, producer, and a musician. A highly recommended, nice guy. All the way from Dallas, Texas, would you please join Jazz Across the Pond, Mr. G, myself, the Jazz Cat, as we warmly welcome the man himself, Mr. Tom Braxton. Good evening, sir. Well, good evening. It's, it's a pleasure the crowd, to be here. A real the crowd pleasure. goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start the interview, for our regular followers, we've just got to say that uh, for those of uh, the followers that religiously, every week they tune in and they watch out. And of course, this week in their diary, they would have seen that Nico Henry was meant to be here. So as you can clearly see, Nico Henry's not here. And the reason for that is Nico Henry, her secretary, contacted me a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, and said, her new album, which we're all eagerly waiting to get our hands on, is being delayed. There's some problems in Miami or the rest of it, and, and it's been delayed. And they said, is there any chance could we come on in the... She didn't want to come on and not have a new album, to which we understood. And Tom, you've been fabulous because you were scheduled to join us in November, and we've literally done that. So, Tom, thank you so much for standing in at very short notice. We're very grateful. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad I, I'm glad it was able to work out. <laughs> That's it. Well, I know you know Nico, don't you? Haven't you worked with her or something in the past or something? Seems like I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, uh, they have okay. a new record coming out. That's right. Okay, so there we are. So, Tom, <laughs> our followers like to, would like to know more because we're going to be playing some of your music. Uh, well, our followers would like to know more about you the man. Please tell our, our followers more about your childhood, your, where you, your early days playing the saxophone, and was, was the saxophone your first instrument? Tell us more about you, the man himself, please. Wow, okay. Well, I, I grew up in West Texas, actually, uh, in a little place called Lubbock. It was like mm. Mayberry. Mayberry. It was great. Uh, Except it has I, cattle. It has a lot yeah. of cattle, though, Tom. Yes, it does. <laughs> Uh, and a lot of cotton up there, but uh, I was very blessed because my dad um, is, was a saxophonist and band director and orchestra director. And so uh, he was the one who had music always going in the house. And what was great about him is he grew up as a teenager on the old, in Oklahoma on Route 66. So he heard all of the original big bands. He heard Duke Ellington and Count Basie and Fletcher Henderson and, and uh, all of that great music. And he, that put a passion in him that he just kept that fire his whole life. So I mm. was always listening to jazz when I, when I was growing up, um, all kinds of great music. And so I started with the piano when I was about, uh, oh, probably about nine years old. Mm -hmm. And then, then he brought home an alto sax when I was about 10 or 11. And um, that was it. Uh, I just really enjoyed it. I didn't know I was going to do music for a living, but uh, I just, uh, I just loved, uh, loved it from the beginning playing in band. I, I, was, I was in the band program. My sister was also a pianist and a violinist. She has mm -hmm. a master's degree in piano. Um, and so it, it was just, we had a very musical home. I, I grew up in a great environment of music. And that, that's where everything started. And then I uh, was in the band, marching band and everything. Went to um, high school, Texas Tech University. I graduated from there with a Bachelor of Music degree. And then I've been playing ever since. Amazing. Now, before Kevin jumps in with a question, I know he's very keen to, uh, our followers always, uh, they go, they wonder which kind of shirts we're going to be wearing, because we all, we all try to wear outlandish shirts. And I say you're our hey. first guest who's come on with a really nice shirt. 
No, I, it's yeah. not as nice as Kevin. So, that's... oh my, okay, oh. Well, and it's not, and it's not outlandish either. I get that's... a lot of compliments on this shirt, Jazz Cat. Just so that's you know. that's a nice shirt. I love that blue. I think I picked this up in Jamaica, but uh, but Tom, your music uh, has become well entrenched on radio, and you're on all the major streaming, you know, music streaming platforms. Your projects have continuously captured spots on most of the jazz charts, including Billboard's Smooth Jazz. Uh, top 50 on Radio Wave Smooth Jazz Top 100 on um, Smooth Jazz Global Top 100, Groove Jazz Music Top 30, and also on Amazon. But what I find amazing though is your music career was actually fast tracked during your college years. Now, what you didn't mention was is that you graduated valedictorian from your high school. And you didn't mention, you did say you went to uh, Texas Tech University, but you went on a music scholarship and a track scholarship. And we're not going to ask you about your sprints, <laughs> but we are going to ask you about the music. But what I found amazing was is that while you were at uh, Texas Tech, you formed a jazz fusion band called No Compromise, which garnered a lot of praise for you guys in the Southwest. But you found yourself ultimately opening for Joe Sample, Stanley Clark, and George Howard, just to mention a few. Now, Tom, <laughs> other than yourself, did any of the other members of No Compromise realize any commercial success? So that's the first part of my question. And then secondly, you know, what lessons did you learn and what aspirations did you develop while playing in your jazz fusion band? Wow, uh, you did some research on me, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love track and field. I uh, I went to Tech yeah, on a track scholarship and, and loved it. And uh, my son actually just graduated from Baylor University and he was on a track scholarship. So, wow. Uh, and he's, he's a sprinter and he's seeking to uh, run professionally. So, wow. uh, yeah, cool. so special times. As far as uh, those days, wow. Uh, I learned a lot because first of all, uh, if you can entertain people in Lubbock, Texas with jazz, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you are, uh, you, you know, you, you have to learn some skills to do that. So, because it's not exactly, you know, jazz isn't at the top of the list out there. Right. It's more, you know, it's not bad, but it's more country and rock, which is fine. So I learned a lot and, of, and we love we love all of our friends in Lubbock. I do too. I, okay, I mean, all right. <laughs> but I'm saying I. Uh, so I had to learn uh, how to entertain, um, mm. and those skills I think stayed with me for have still stayed with me. And then getting to open those shows for those artists, those are iconic artists that. Uh, oh yeah. I. Still in awe of, you know, I, first time I met Joe Sample, I was like, you have no idea how big of an influence you were. The Crusaders, mm. oh. I bought every record they made. You know, I, when I met Wilton Felder, I was like, Wilton Felder. <laughs> you know? there, there are several people growing up in Lubbock that I just wore the records out. There was uh, uh, Grover Washington Jr., there was wow. um, the Crusaders, and mm -hmm. then there was Ronnie, Ronnie Laws, uh, Jean-Luc Ponty. And then I remember going into a Hastings record store one day, and they were playing Jeff Lorber's Wizard Island. And I said, whatever oh, wow. that is, whatever that is, I'm buying it. And <laughs> I, I probably proceeded to buy everything he did for a while. Yes. So, those guys yeah. really inspire Jaira. All those, all those yeah. guys affect me coming up. Well, you've actually now gone ahead and answered my next question, which is brilliant. This is great, don't worry. But I mean, the Crusaders, I, uh, I saw the Jazz Crusaders, well, the Crusaders, because they were formerly the Jazz Crusaders before coming the Crusaders. And uh, I actually, I had the honor of shaking Joe Sample's hand once after a concert and, uh, oh, magic. And Will <laughs> Capella, Styx Hooper on drums. There's Larry Colton used to be with them in yes. the early days. Yeah. Wayne Henderson, I mean, oh, massive. I've got, there's a whole section of uh, Crusaders there. And there's a whole section of Joe Sample 
example, the entire works of Joe Sample. So I'm following. Anyway, so you've answered my next question. So this is great, but I'm going to say that a jazz saxophonist Tom Braxton has garnered critically acclaimed while thrilling audiences from all ages, from coast to coast, from abroad, from over two decades, from Africa to Japan, from New York to LA. That could be a song from New York to LA. No, <laughs> catch on. Uh, and of course, so Tom, as distinctive melodic sound, leaves audiences absolutely astounded. So I was going to say who your influences, but you've already just told us. And there's some wonderful names of uh, saxophonists there. I mean, Wilton Feld, I think Inherit the Wind was an incredible album. It really was. Yes. Yes, and um, let me add as far as influences that to me I was both, I was new school and old school because my father was huge on tone. And mm. he said, because he grew up in a time when Coleman Hawkins and Lester Young and Ben Webster and mm. all those gentlemen had their own sound. When they started playing, they were individuals. And, and he said, and your that's... dad, your dad played tenor sax. I guess he's, he's still playing, isn't he? Well, no, he, he actually uh, passed away in December oh. at, at 101. Well, see, the <laughs> last time I looked, the last time I checked, I knew he was 98. I knew that was like, but he was yeah. playing at age 98. That's amazing. Yes. But he was a tenor saxophone player. Yes, he played tenor. Oh. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was walking down to the middle school at the end of the block and sitting in with their little jazz band after school uh, in his uh -huh. 90s. Oh, and so cool. uh, the funniest story is he went, uh, they played a little concert at a uh, nursing home. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dad, um, you're older than all the residents <laughs> anyway, and you're performing <laughs> for them. So, <laughs> well, so well, Tom, was, the one thing I want you to share, because I want to now watch Roger when you answer this question. And okay, you were talking about people you were influenced by. There was a song that uh, was the lead off track on your 2007 CD. Uh, Imagine this, a song called uh, Peg. Oh, look yes. at Roger. Did you... <laughs> Steely Dan. <laughs> Steely Dan. Oh. Yes, I mean, <sighs> yeah. those guys. <laughs> you know, those guys did did um, two at least two remarkable things for me. One, wow. they had a distinct sound mm -hmm. from from the very beginning, and number two, they were able to parlay their creativity into commercial success. Mm. And everybody mm. can't do that. They were very creative, right, right. but it was commercially successful for them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been a big fan of theirs since the 70s. Yeah. There you go. Well, uh, nice one there, Kevin. Thank you. And I actually <laughs> was very fortunate in 2000, I went to see Steely Dan in Wembley, London, and 7,000 people. And you're absolutely right, because uh, there's Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, and they're not into this audience participation. We'll sing a line, you sing a line. They're not into that. It's just like, no, <laughs> we're professional musicians. Listen to us. And they were playing. And at the end of this one song, and the band were, you know, getting themselves ready, and Donald Fagan was playing a few chords, and suddenly one man in the front row went, Hotel California and Donald Fagan just stopped and went wrong band. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant. Anyway, listen, we're going to play a track, but before then, I've just got to pick up on Wilson Felder. Uh, there's a wonderful album called Scratch where they did a cover of a Carol King song called So Far Away. And Wilson Felder, in the middle of it, play, held a note for one minute. He just held this whole yes. note for that one minute. And it was just like, how on earth? And, and I know uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful art of breathing in and playing at the exact same to keep that same tone going. And the audience went wild. Anyway, there we are. Wilton Felder, magic, magic man, along with some Di Watanabe and all the rest of it. They're all fabulous players. Now, now we're going to now take a quick, quick interval from this interview. We want to get back straight back to it because we've got so much to establish yourself. We're going to play another track from your fabulous album, Looking Up. We're going to play a track called Hope for Tomorrow. And I'll tell you that, that during the pandemic, I think we are all hoping for tomorrow. I think there's a wonderful sentiment behind this track. So, ladies and gentlemen, just across the pond, Mr. G, myself, the jazz cat, with the wonderful Tom Braxton. We'll be back to you in very, very quick. Have a listen to this, and we'll be straight back with you. Okay.
Welcome back to Jazz Across the Pond with the Jazz Cat and Mr. G. We've been listening to the inspirational track, Hope for Tomorrow, featuring the legendary composer, pianist, and keyboardist, Mr. Bob James, from Tom Braxton's 2021 monster project, Looking Up. Tom, we featured Hope for Tomorrow on my jazz program, The Smooth Jazz Train, back on May the 7th, and our members loved it. I received several follow-up questions from our listeners wanting to know, number one, how you met Bob James. Number two, how was it working with him? And lastly, and Roger kind of alluded to it, was Hope for Tomorrow intended to be an anthem of hope for a multitude of listeners around the world struggling with the pandemic? Wow, those are three great questions. Um, I met Bob James um, on the Smooth Jazz Cruise. That's mm. when we met the first time. And uh, I'll never forget it because we were that morning. Uh, I was see, I was a, uh, I was playing saxophone with several several different artists on the smooth jazz cruise, and they had um, chosen me. Uh, Bob, they put me with Bob James, which was an mm. an, on, an honor uh, because he needed a saxophonist. So I woke up that morning, and there was a message on my phone. And he had written a brand new song like the night before. Oh that, wow! That we were going to learn. It's called. <laughs> it's, and it, and it was. It was kind of involved, and so uh, I'll never forget. So I had to learn it, and uh, but uh, it, it it was called a sea goddess. I remember, and we learned it, mm -hmm. and uh, just loved playing with him. Loved playing that show. Then I played a few things with him with Earl Clue. Um, as a weekend of jazz, he's right. just delight. He's just delightful. I mean, uh, he uh, he's just so musical. So, uh, uh, gosh, just I just just talking to him, you learn so much. I ask him a few questions about his approach to jazz and jazz improvisation, and I'm just like a, a big sponge absorbing right. him. Um, and then Hope for Tomorrow, yeah, it was supposed to be uh, an upbeat, fun, uh, I, sunshiny kind of, the idea was, we're going to we, we're gonna make it through this. We are, mm. there's Hope for Tomorrow. And, and I wanted to do it as a duet, and Bob came to mind to use him on it, on the track, and he was amenable to doing it. And... Uh, wow. How cool. He played amazingly and just perfectly added to the song what it needed. Incredible. Ma amazing stuff. Well, there we are. That one. So you got to buy the album because the whole album is brilliant. We are going to be finishing the interview with another track. We're going to come back to the moment. First of all, and of course, when you listen to the album, that's why Jazz Review calls uh, Tom Braxton one of Smooth Jazz's most prolific saxophonist with all the required tools to become a major force you were already there you are a major major force in the summer of 2020 the uh, you signed for inner vision records and released the single entitled looking up so can you tell us what was the backstory behind the actual album itself we've we've understood what the track was but what about the whole album what was the backstory behind the album well it had been a uh few years since we had done a single, I mean, a, a, sorry, a solo record. Mm -hmm. We had done a, pro, I'd done a project with a, with a, a trumpet player called the Sine Braxton Collaborative, but it'd been a while. And um, we had decided to switch labels. And then it, when, uh, when, when things really started changing and the, well, a lot of the work went away, Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't had any time to do any writing, but I did now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I used that time to write and um, I'm glad I did. And a lot of people did because there was a lot of music put out during right. 2020 and 2021. <clears throat> so the backstory was I wanted to do an, an uplifting project that was encouraging, that was fun, uh, that... Um, people would be able to put on and enjoy and be uplifted by it. And so that was the backstory behind the whole record. As far as the single, uh, that was written, that first single was written by Herman Jackson. 
And he is an amazing pianist and keyboardist and producer. And my wife was listening to him on one of her walks. And she came in and said, you know, have you thought about working with, with Herman? And Herman and I played together on the Smooth Jazz Cruise. And I said, ah, and I got in touch with him and he came up with that first single. So uh, that's how it started. And then I just started writing the rest of it after that. Well, it's a brilliant well, album. Kevin, to give, our, to give our viewers a, a little bit of extra information. So Looking Up charted well on Billboard's Smooth Jazz chart and captured the number one spot on Amazon's bestseller list and also number one on their new releases list as well. As you mentioned, the title track, Looking Up, was written and produced by the legendary keyboardist and producer, Mr. Hume, Herbert um, Herman Jackson, I'll get it out, who worked with Stevie Wonder, Quincy Jones, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Babyface, Rod Stewart, and Dave Cause, just to mention a few. So if you would, just tell us a little bit more about working with Herman. Uh, so obviously your wife came in and said, you've got to talk to this guy, right? <laughs> I mean, did he share any stories with you regarding some of the legends he had worked with? And did he offer you any sage advice? Well, um, we didn't get to talk about a lot of his, his past. Uh, we, mm -hmm. um, we talked we because we had spent some time together on the smooth jazz cruise correct and and he has this this the this the project that we were listening to is called the uh the cool side i believe is the name of his project hmm. and so we love that record and so that was the inspiration for um us getting in touch with him about looking up uh, he, uh, he's just got a knack for great writing. And we talked about, um, uh, you know, there's certain, I always like to write songs that have some substance to them. So mm -hmm. even if it's something for radio or whatever, I, I'd like for it to make a statement of some sort, something that you'll remember, uh, for the next time, because there's so much music out there and there's so many good sax players out there. So you have to uh, keep trying to remind people, hey, I'm still here, you know, that kind of thing. But um, he, uh, and plus Herman's kind of on the quiet side, so he doesn't say much about his own accolades. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't brag about what he's done, but he's, he's quite the writer, quite the producer. And he just said, I got you covered. He wrote the two and he produced it and uh, put the musicians together and, all that and it was ready to go. Right, it's Great brilliant. Track. Now, track. Your, your versatile instrument, uh, you've recorded nine albums, including The Other Side in 2016, The Next Chapter in 2014, Endless Highway 2009, uh, The Imagine This 2007, Pacific Coast Jazz Label, uh, and then of course you got Bounce in 2005 and Rendezvous Label, The Next Chapter featuring Grammy winners, Bob James, we've already spoken about, the wonderful Earl Clue, Ricky Lawson, as well as uh, one of the smooth jazz beloved favorites, and a, a former guest, as well, uh, the wonderful Peter White. Uh, with all these amazing talents that have uh, on this stellar albums that you've got, and you and uh, our followers should really start buying their albums and getting the catalogue of your albums. And uh, please tell us what you felt the difference from your like your debut album right up now, nine albums later, with looking up. How do you think they've changed now? How do you think you've changed? Well, I think um, one of the biggest changes is the approach to writing um, because I came from uh, the, a fusion background mm -hmm. and when I when I was coming up in college with the no compromise group right. uh, fusion was hot and heavy uh, during that time period and so uh, the jazz was not as commercial as far as singles and like smooth jazz singles and those sorts of things. So um, I think the biggest thing is just learning how to keep your own identity, but write for the format. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think that's the, the biggest challenge is, yeah, I want to kind of keep who I am, but at the same time, you have to learn how to write uh, so that you can get the right kind of airplay and that because that's important. 
So I suppose the key word is adapting, isn't it? Because everything is evolving, everything is changing, uh, but as, as quintessentially keeping your, your, your legion of fans, that's your, that's your sound, that's your, as we've spoken about the Wilson Feld, and most albums you can pick up within minutes, you can, you can turn around and go, I know who that is, even if the actual structure is different, but I know who that artist is. So I, I, I applaud you for that. Well, Tom, I want to, I'm going to take you back because you, I'm not going to let you just slide on talking about being at Texas Tech because there's a few other things we want to talk about. <laughs> First of all, after graduating summa cum laude from Texas Tech, Mr. Valedictorian in high school and summa cum laude, uh, your first business move turned out to be rather brilliant. You enlisted the services of the legendary keyboardist and producer uh, Bernard Wright to release your uh, solo debut project, Your Move, in 1992. By the way, just for our viewers, Mr. Wright himself at age 13 toured with jazz fusion drummer Lenny White from the legendary Talk About Jazz Fusion Band, Return to Forever with Chikoria, Stanley Clark, and L.D. Miola. And at age 16, he played with Tom Brown. So securing the services of Bernard Wright would prove to be a seminal movement or moment uh, in your career because Bernard introduced you to the late great composing bassist and producer, Mr. Wayman Tisdale. Yes. And I want to take a few seconds just to talk about that. Tom, you toured with Wayman extensively for 17 years as a musician and as his music director during the last 10 years that you were together. Wayman produced your fifth project, Bounce, on Dave Cause's label, Rendezvous Entertainment. The passing of Wayman Tisdale on May 15th of 2009 at age 44 shook the jazz world, and losing Wayman was a big loss for our genre. You were quoted as saying, Wayman was a gifted musician and a great friend, and I will always miss him. I stood by his side for 17 years, and it was my goal to make him sound great every night. Through the years, I became good at blending my sound with his, a valued skill I learned while in his band. Wayman's passing is a reminder of our mortality, and it has made me even more determined to live my life to fulfill the purpose God has for me. So, Tom, Wayman was larger than life, and his smile was infectious. If you would share with our viewers one of your favorite Wayman Tisdale stories, <laughs> I would love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that, uh, Obviously, I loved him very much. Yeah, yeah I just that I forgot the, uh, that quote. Um, that even brought some emotions back even now, these many years later. <clears throat> because uh, That's awesome. That's awesome. We were, uh, we spent so many years together. And uh, uh, he was... Uh, Whatever, whatever you saw, that's that was for real. That's who he was. He was uh, big on stage, big off stage. Um, yeah, yeah, and just a big teddy bear. And uh, we uh, and Bernard. Yeah, it's crazy, Bernard. I'm, it's good to hear somebody to talk about Bernard, right? Because I had Bernard's. I had that first record of his called uh, Nard. Uh, yes, that came out on GRP Ooh. when he was like 15. And uh, uh, he was giving the goosebumps now. <laughs> he was absolutely killing on that record. I mean, he sounds like an old man. He said he's only 15. But um, he, we ended up working together, and then he's the one that connected me with Wayman. And then he, he didn't even stay in the band that long. He moved on to other things, but I ended up staying with Wayman. And um, Wayman, there's so many fun stories. I still remember, <laughs> I still remember this, was, this was, of course, before all the, the uh, flight regulations that there are now. <laughs> but I remember there was an old, air, there used to be America West Airlines. <laughs> out, right, of right, right. out of Phoenix. And he was a Phoenix Sun. Mm -hmm. Well, that's remember, a basketball team, Roger. The Phoenix yeah. Suns in the NBA. Yeah, and he. We all got on the plane to go somewhere, and um, I heard. I sat, was sitting back in my chair, and I heard this voice come over the intercom, and I said, 
that sounds like Wayman. And it was no. And, and he came on and he goes, uh, today's uh, in-flight meal is going to be soul food. We're going to have some collard greens and sweet potatoes. And, da, da, da. and he goes through all this. And I said, that, how did Wayman get up there to be talking up there near the cockpit? But that was just his, he could, he made friends everywhere he went. And, oh, uh, gosh. Uh, he was just, he was amazing. And I appreciate Bernard Wright for connecting me. And Bernard Wright is probably the most talented uh, in-person pianist I've met. Uh, mm. I mean, he's, he, there, now, there almost wasn't anything he couldn't do on a keyboard. Right. Uh, yeah. Awesome. I, Brilliant. What well, thank a, you for a, sharing that story. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And uh, I can, can, we can see the emotions there. So uh, mm -hmm. amazing. Thank, bringing it up to date, because uh, I'm consciously aware that lady uh, time is not on our side. Are we right in saying, let's bring things up to date now, that uh, you're currently, or you have been, you've been touring with the wonderful yeah. Earl Clue around the United States? Right. I, uh, I played with Earl Clue on the uh, Smooth Jazz Cruise in 2010. And then three years went by and I heard that he was trying, his people were trying to get in touch with me. Hmm. And in 2013, they asked me to sub on a show and I did, and I was prepared. <laughs> and so um, after that show was over, I, <coughs> excuse me, I hugged his manager. <laughs> and, and I said, thank you for having me because Denise is his wife and, and manager. I said, thanks for having me. I had a blast. And if you, if you need me again, let me know. Awesome. And, and she, when she, uh, when we pulled back from each other, she said, well, actually we're going to South Africa in a couple of weeks. Can you do that? <laughs> and I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we went here and we went there and we went there. Yeah, and I've been playing with him ever since. Oh, amazing. Well, lovely. It's an, honor. it's an honor. Tom, where can our followers download, purchase, buy, get hold of your catalogue of wonderful albums? Where can they get them, please? Well, um, iTunes, Amazon uh, should have the bulk of the catalogue. Uh, mm -hmm. If they go to our website, I think there's a way to just, if they go to TomBraxton.com, they can click on it. And uh, it'll tell them where to go to uh, to find the music. But yeah, they can go get all. They can download music from all the way back to the first project. Excellent, Kevin. Have you got a last question for Tom? I do. Uh, you know, again, Tom does a real good job of just kind of glancing over things. He doesn't want to talk about himself. I'm going to pull another tooth out. <laughs> Yeah, he's been featured, uh, just so our fans know, he's been, a, he's been a featured artist and fan favorite of the Smooth Jazz Cruise for 12 years. I mean, it's not like you've only been on there a few times. It's been 12 years. But the amazing thing is for everybody to know is you've performed as a headliner at jazz festivals around the world, including Portugal, uh, Portugal Ghana, the Netherlands, Uganda, and Indonesia. You've also toured with uh, Keiko Matsui in Russia, Eastern Europe, Malaysia, and Japan. Now, I mentioned earlier the positive response we got from Hope for Tomorrow that we received from our listeners of the Smooth Jazz Train, especially from our international friends and followers. And we have members from 140, question, 140 countries. And the question that they've been nagging me about is they want to know when are they going to see you on tour in the near future back in Europe? Ah. Uh. I would, I would love to go tomorrow if I could. Uh, I, I would love to return to Europe, seriously. Um, I, hopefully um, things will settle down with some of the travel mm -hmm. restrictions and different things and we can get back to playing more overseas dates because those audiences were absolutely amazing. The Africa right. dates, the Africa dates I did with Thurl, the European mm -hmm. dates, Japan, all oh, those people were just amazing fans. So I'd love to come back. So I, all I can say is just keep your eye on our website, the tour schedule and, and our Facebook. And I can't wait to put some dates up there once we get those booked. 
Brilliant. Well, I know that for the UK followers, we would love to see you in the United Kingdom, at Ronnie Scott's or uh, Hover and the, uh, the Pizza Express. We would love to see you. We're going to be finishing the interview because Lady Time is literally knocking on the door now. <laughs> Ed, so we're going to actually play a track now uh, from your uh, the unique arrangement of the Beatles classic, Eleanor Rigsby. And it's just the most mesmerizing and playful. Uh, it's just the most wonderful. We're going to be finishing off. It's a track, again, featured from your wonderful album, Looking Up. Tom, it is an absolute pleasure. It's a delight and it's an honor to have you join us on the show. We can't thank you enough. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm sorry, I'm having some <clears throat> uh, cough issues, just a little under the weather a little bit. So sorry about that. Hopefully my voice came through all right. It, Loud and clear, it brother. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Say goodnight, Kevin. Good night, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> it's good night from me. Oh, thanks to the wonderful Mr. Tom Braxton for joining us tonight. Purchase the album, buy the collection of the whole albums. Next week, yeah, we've got Mr. Ed. Go on, Kevin, see who we got next week. Well, the nice thing is, is that, uh, so we have Tom today, we've got uh, Randy Scott next week, and then we have Lynn Rontree, Acoustic Alchemy, and Ray Fuller. Whoa. Good, good, good. All a good one. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, just across the pond, stay safe, stay warm, keep yourself protected. From all three of us, take care, look after yourself, and goodbye. I look at all the lonely people. I look at all